Good morning, everybody. You are listening or watching to A Cup of St. Joe, where I serve an espresso shot of teaching and devotion about St. Joseph during Pope Francis's year of St. Joseph. Today, I am speaking with Jose Rodriguez. He was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and has always had a great devotion to St. Joseph. It is his mission in life, he says, to make St. Joseph better known and loved in the world and he's spoken at conferences and published books on this subject. And today we're actually going to be talking about one of his books that the cover uh, is one that I've seen as I've looked for St. Joseph books on Amazon called The Book of St. Joseph. So welcome to The Cup of St. Joe, Jose Rodriguez. Thank you very much, Father. It's great to have you. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I picked up a copy of your book and was very impressed by it. And just want to talk a little bit about it because as you said in your bio, you have a very strong devotion to St. Joseph. And I think for a lot of people, their devotion to the saints arises at different times. And for you, how would you say that your devotion to St. Joseph came about? Well, it actually goes back to my childhood. Um, I didn't have the best relationship with my father. Uh, for me, a father is supposed to mold and nurture and and love you from boyhood into manhood. And I didn't really get that. So I was always looking for, for a father figure from day one. And I would go to mass and at the front altar on two sides of the altar, there'd be a niche for Our Lady, lots of uh, flowers and banners, very ornamental. And then you pan over to St. Joseph and there's nothing there. It's just mm. in the shadows, very boring and dark. And I felt, I felt bad. I remember I during mass, instead of paying attention to the priest, unfortunately, I'd be focusing on, on St. Joseph and I guess meditating in a way thinking, you know, this poor guy's off to the side. I mean, he's holding the baby Jesus too. Why can't we celebrate him as well? Right. So right away, I felt a connection that way because I always growing up, I always felt like I was pushed to the side. I was always alone. And so I felt for, for the underdog, I felt bad for him. And then I thought, well, before all this consecration stuff happened, I thought maybe I can take him as my spiritual father. I don't know. I didn't know if that was allowed or, or anything like that, but I kind of formed a relationship with him uh, based on my need for a father who understood me. And here you have St. Joseph who molded, nurtured, loved not only his son, but God himself, the, you know, God, the son, second person of the Trinity. So surely if he's good enough for that, He's good enough for me to have as a father. So that's kind of how it started. Sure. Um, were you on this little, um, there was a Zoom call back in, uh, I think, March. Uh, it was with some diocese in Canada, and I was one of those speakers. Were you a part of that? I, I shared a little bit about how I myself kind of relate a little bit to what you said, that I didn't really have a father picture, but you had to find other people then to step into that role in a sense, to be that St. Joseph for you. And so uh, I shared about that. It was with this priest, Father Richard Cromwell, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, he's going to be a guest on how they, on, he's going to be a guest on the Cup of St. Joe uh, one of these weeks as well. So uh, kind of talking with him and and because he's a young priest with this very strong devotion uh, to St. Joseph. So you look to St. Joseph, you took him as your spiritual father. What impresses you the most then about St. Joseph, about who he is? Uh, the first thing that would come to mind is his resilience. Um, if, you, if you read my book, you, you see that he had a rough childhood. He was harassed by the devil. Uh, people ridiculed him for his piety. Uh, he was alone a lot of the time when he was married to Our Lady, you know, he uh, first he didn't feel worthy enough. And then he finds out, well, he is worthy, but she's with child and he's not the father. And uh, then he has to find uh, a place for her to give birth to this child. And if you watch, you know, movies, the stereotypical image of the, the frantic husband driving his car, trying to get his wife to the hospital while she's about to give birth in the car. That's kind of how I see St. Joseph and Our Lady, like, you know, tick tock, like hurry up and find a place. And the best he could do was a cave. So the, I, I imagine the shame that he must have felt. And then it just goes on and on. You know, there, there's a hit out on your son. You have to go to, you know, in exile to a foreign pagan land. You know, no, no uh, house, no job, no friends. That's, that can really wear a person down. I can only imagine. So his resilience, he's always pushing forward, pushing forward. 
And he had the grace to receive, you know, angelic visitations to keep encouraging him. And so he, he just keeps motoring on, you know, the energizer Bonnier keeps going, going, going. So I really respect and admire his resilience because, you know, when we're faced with trials, everyday trials in life, you know, I look to St. Joseph and I think, you know, I could have it a lot worse. And I'm glad that I have his example. So I think we could all learn from him. So you've taken to this devotion to St. Joseph. You look to him as an example. Now, I think this year of St. Joseph is an opportunity for a lot of Catholics to say, you know, I really haven't looked to St. Joseph as a spiritual father. I want to be devoted to him in some way. If someone's just beginning their devotion to St. Joseph, where do they start? What do they do? Well, to form any real devotion to a saint, uh, you have to develop a, a relationship with them. You have to you have to get to know them. I mean, saints are people too, right? It's If you want to be friends with someone, you have to get to know who they are. So the first thing would be get to know who St. Joseph is. And uh, shameless plug here, read my book and you'll get to know him. Um, after that, I'd say if you're already praying the rosary, there is a prayer to St. Joseph that is technically supposed to be attached to the end that a lot of people have forgotten about. Uh, Pope Leo XIII gave us uh, the prayer to the O Blessed Joseph with the express order that we recite this at the end of the rosary, uh, I, I guess after the Salve Regina. So if you already pray the rosary, attach that prayer to the end of it, like we're supposed to be doing anyway, because it draws him into the mystery of the rosary, because he was a part of those moments of the life of Christ and Our Lady. Um, another way would be to keep it simple. You don't have to pray a hundred litanies every day to St. Joseph to have a devotion to him. You know, um, just keep it simple. Like when I first started out, I had trouble finding a prayer to St. Joseph that I, I could learn from the top of my head. Like as Catholics, we know the Our Father, the Ave Maria, the Glory Be. We don't have to look it up. But for St. Joseph, I always had to look in a book for a prayer and they're usually like this long. So I came up with my own prayer with the same rhythm of the Hail Mary. So it was easy to remember and I kept it simple. And then later on, as I wanted other avenues, uh, I went into like the Holy Cloak devotion, the litanies, the 30 days, 30 days prayer, et cetera. Um, again, just keep it simple, keep it childlike, right? Sure, definitely. And of course you could pray a novena you can pray a novena to St. Joseph, not just for his feast day, but you could pray any nine days if there's a special intention uh, that you're definitely praying for. Now, one of the things I noticed in your book, the book of Joseph, was that you mentioned some of these apparitions of St. Joseph and uh, kind of as an apparition scholar, uh, having written a Lenten journey with Mother Mary, for example, and um, going to many of these different shrines of Our Lady's apparitions, I was familiar with the fact that St. Joseph appeared, you know, in Knock. Uh, I have a picture in my living room of Knock, Ireland, of that image uh, of St. Joseph and Mary and St. John and the altar, et cetera. And then I was also aware, of course, of Fatima, that Our Lady appeared in the final apparition, St. Joseph came holding the Christ child. But there are other apparitions of St. Joseph probably not as common, but can you share a little bit about some of those apparitions, maybe one that impresses you the most even? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, I did put a book out on that because I couldn't find one myself. So this has all, a bunch of apparitions, uh, St. Joseph messages of the heart. Uh, one apparition that really impressed me, and it's one of his basic ones, very basic, uh, is St. Joseph in Cantignac, France. Uh, there's the shepherd boy, uh, Gaspard Ricard, you know, there's a drought, there's no water, he's thirsty. Suddenly St. Joseph appears and all he says is, I am Joseph, lift the rock and you will drink. Well, so there's, there's this big boulder, uh, Gaspard says, well, he can't do it, it's too large. St. Joseph instructs him to do it again. He moves the rock miraculously, a spring comes up and St. Joseph disappears. So for me, that was simple to the point. Uh, again, St. Joseph looking out for, you know, our basic needs even, uh, and then it became a big pilgrimage site, you know, the King of France went there and uh, everyone flocked to Cantignac, Cantignac, France. Now, unfortunately, during the revolution and stuff, it kind of disappeared, um, but at the beginning of the 20th century, I think, is when they, they reestablished it as a place of pilgrimage, so for me, as simple as it is, that's 
my favorite St. Joseph apparition because it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's not complicated. It's, I see you're thirsty, here, have some water, you know, refresh yourself. So something so simple, and now tons of people flock there to seek St. Joseph's guidance. Wow, yeah, I never have heard of that. And honestly, it really calls to mind the story of Jesus saying, you know, I am the living water, or I will give you life-giving water. And so St. Joseph kind of leading people to that reality. So yeah, I'll have to definitely check that out. I remember when I was in the seminary, I was looking on the EWTN religious catalog website and I should go back and I should look and see if it's there, but there was a DVD that was about apparitions of St. Joseph. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Have you seen that or no? Uh, yeah, I had a DVD from EWTN. It had, uh, it was about St. Joseph of Cantignac, just that particular oh, okay. apparition. I think it was about half an hour. Um, it was decent. It was okay. Uh, sure, it's sure. a pretty short story, so there's only so much you can say on a DVD about it. But yeah, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I wish there were more DVDs that focused on his apparition. Like you mentioned, Knock, Our Lady appeared appeared there. Well, so did Saint John and Saint Joseph. But we always say Our Lady of Knock. Well, how about Saint Joseph of Knock? Yeah, you know? and the bit the Holy Father, I think, just made Knock a Eucharistic shrine or something during this year of Saint Joseph and. You know, there, it, it kind of got a little more uh, publicity in a sense during the year of St. Joseph. I'm hoping um, Archbishop Eamon Martin, who's the bishop there in that diocese, uh, he gave this beautiful homily for uh, the Chrism Mass. Maybe you saw it, I'm not sure. But uh, it was really a beautiful uh, homily about St. Joseph in the life of a priest. And uh, I actually used it as kind of the basis for my own Holy Thursday homily when I preached uh, at the parish as a way, you know, this is how St. Joseph inspires the priest. So pray for your your priest that he might live like that, that he might encompass that virtue of St. Joseph. So I'm hoping to have him on in August around the anniversary of Knock so that we could talk about St. Joseph at Knock and that new designation as well. So uh, I need to reach out. He, he hasn't replied to my Twitter message. So he did like something of mine on Twitter. He started following me, but maybe just hasn't gotten to the message tab on Twitter yet. So anyways, um, in, in your book, the book of Joseph, there is also a lot of quotes, you know, saints have said things about St. Joseph. And I know Father Callaway is compiling tons and tons of quotes about St. Joseph. You've done that here as well yourself. Is there one thing that maybe the Pope said or a saint said that just their words about St. Joseph truly inspires you? Uh, okay, well, I do have a lot of favorite quotes, but uh, could I give two? Yes, please, please. Okay. So first one uh, by Pope Francis. Uh, it's very simple, but it speaks a lot to me. He says, by accepting himself according to God's design, Joseph fully finds himself beyond himself. His freedom to renounce even what is his, the possession of his very life, and his full interior availability to the will of God challenges us and shows us the way. So that's that's one that I always carry close. Um, let's see. Oh, there's another one. It's longer. It's by St. Peter Julien Imard, um, which uh, kind of talks about adoration. Now, whenever I would go to adoration, I always struggled because I never knew what to say or how to pray properly or how to adore properly. And this, so this always speaks to me. It made it a much more uh, enjoyable experience. When Joseph embraced Jesus in his arms, acts of loving faith welled up constantly in his heart. It was a worship that pleased our Lord more than that which he receives in heaven. Picture for yourself, St. Joseph adoring his son as his God. He tells of his readiness to die for Christ of all his plans to promote Christ's glory and to win more souls to his love. No matter what you do, your adoration will never equal in worth that of St. Joseph. So join with his merits. A soul that loves God offers everything to him in love and God listens to such a soul, which is worth a thousand others. So for me, that kind of took the pressure off of how to adore properly because no matter how how well I think I'm doing in adoration, it will never equal St. Joseph's. So again, keep it simple and join with St. Joseph while you're adoring Christ. Um, that's really helped me a lot. And if I can just quickly mention two of my favorite papal documents, 
mm. uh, since we're on the subject of favorites. Um, I don't know if I'll say it right, but we have uh, Quimad Modum Deus uh, from 1870 by Pope Pius IX. That, of course, is a document where he declares St. Joseph to be patron of the Universal Church and his reasons for doing so. And also Quam Quam Pluris by Pope Leo XIII uh, from 1889, who I mentioned earlier. To me, those are the two uh, big guns right there. Wonderful. Yeah, I... I don't know if I was familiar with that first one that you mentioned. I, I've seen Quam Quam. I, I've seen that one. So yeah, I need to go back and read all the papal writings. Uh, that's one of my goals for the year of St. Joseph. I'm I'm actually working on a little book, a little devotional for St. Joseph to end the year of St. Joseph. And uh, I need to revisit uh, some of those documents just to make sure that what I write, I'm thinking along with the church and allowing the church to inform me. So um, you have a lot of devotion obviously it's very apparent to saint joseph and maybe is there a favorite title of saint joseph a favorite devotion associated with saint joseph that that you really enjoy that you promote well um i'd say my favorite title was actually a combination uh, it's taken from his litany uh, i like to invoke saint joseph the chaste terror of demons uh yeah. for lots of reasons but i mean nowadays impurity is rampant it's it's the devil is targeting males especially at younger and younger ages so we need saint joseph the chaste to uh, give us the graces that we need to fight uh temptation and impurity and of course the devil is behind that so that's where terror of demons comes in now you know when, when we're doing litanies and coming up with these honors for saints you know you don't just hand them out just just for fun they're not just honorary titles when you invoke St. Joseph, the terror of demons, that is his job now. You know, that is his responsibility. Just as being a patron of the church it isn't just a fancy title. It is now his job to guard the church. So we really need to invoke St. Joseph, uh, the just, sorry, the chaste terror of demons. And I'd say my favorite devotion to him right now uh, is the Holy Cloak devotion. Uh, it's takes about as long as the rosary to say i have that in my book as well but it's it, it reflects on various aspects of saint joseph and you ask for help for various needs so i'd say that's my favorite one um and also the 30 days prayer yeah i've actually seen uh that holy cloak devotion i bought a little pamphlet from someplace in michigan i think uh that sells it it's a little blue cover thing and uh, I looked at it a few times. I can't say that I'm a regular devotee of it, but uh, I am familiar with it and, and probably should give that a visit uh, to pray it uh, a few times, especially during this year of St. Joseph, but also beyond the year of St. Joseph. You mentioned, uh, you know, your favorite title is a combination, the Chaste Terror of Demons. Now, my understanding is this, you have a statue or something that's called St. Joseph, the Chaste Heart or something like that. Um, could, could you share about that? I know that there's a, a store in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that's actually selling it. Yeah, so um, when I was like starting out with my devotion to St. Joseph, of course, I'm looking for a, a chaste heart to complete my collection, right? You have the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary, and I can never find one of the Heart of St. Joseph. Um, it's because devotion to his heart was restricted for a while in the church when we were still trying to figure things out theologically. Uh, but so I decided to just go out and make my own, like not make it, but commission it. So I designed it and had it made and it shows St. Joseph clutching his rod with the uh, lilies blooming, which of course was the sign given when he was espoused to Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, the heart has an M and a cross for Jesus and Mary and surrounded by lilies for his purity. Yeah. So there is a shop uh, in the States called the Three Heart Center. They recently changed their name from the Marian Center International. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so I've been dealing with Roman uh, Picula. I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right, but they do have a few of these left. I only have four here in Canada. Uh, they were only produced in a quantity of 100. So once they're gone, they're gone. Although I am having some made in the Philippines for the Philippines. Um, but yeah, so for me, it was important to have some kind of visual representation of his heart. Uh, and I did this before the year of St. Joseph came out and people were kind of questioning my motives and well, why are you doing this? And now suddenly everywhere you see Chase Tart of St. Joseph on, you know, lots of artworks and yes, book yes. covers. It's wonderful because this uh, year of St. Joseph is kind of 
everyone is celebrating him in different ways. You even have, you know, people releasing new hymns, new songs about him, artworks, like it's almost a renaissance in a way, a renaissance for St. Joseph. So That's it's wonderful great. to see. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful time to be alive, despite well, there, COVID. If there's limited quantities of that statue, what you're telling me is I got to go and order one right after we're done recording here so that I'm able to get one of those statues. So I, I'm going to look up. Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the Marion Center International. I didn't know they changed their name. I know that the lady that was really a pioneer behind it, she died recently. Uh, her name was Kathy. May she rest in peace. But Roman, I know, has really taken it off. I wrote a children's book, Breakfast in Bethlehem, and Roman was a big supporter of that book. And uh, we did a few Breakfast in Bethlehem events down in Milwaukee. He came and he played the uh, guitar, I think, and sang some music uh, to accompany the book. So um, yeah, I'm going to definitely check them out and, and place my order. It seems it, it is right and just for me to do so uh, during this year of St. Joseph. Now, you post a lot on social media. There's these groups on Facebook that that's where I found you. I, I, I discovered you through these St. Joseph groups on Facebook, where I started to promote this uh, show on St. Joseph because uh, I decided to be crazy and do a weekly show on St. Joseph for the year of St. Joseph. Everybody wants to do the first Wednesday or they want to do once a month. And I'm like, let's do every week. And so here we are. <laughs> so, so I was putting it out there in those groups. And one of the things I saw you shared the other day was about a scapular of St. Joseph. Now, I'm curious, was that just a brown scapular with the picture of St. Joseph? Or is there actually a scapular dedicated to St. Joseph? Uh, let's see. Well, okay, so it's actually a purple and gold scapular. Uh, it originated in the 17th century uh, with the Capuchins in France. Uh, it was promoted by Pope Leo XIII. It was given indulgences. Uh, there is a rite of investiture, just like the brown scapular. Uh, so it's purple, representing Joseph's royalty, uh, gold as well. And uh, on the front, it has him holding the child Jesus. On the back, it has the papal coat of arms. Now, I know if you go to a lot of websites, there's like hundreds of scapulars to pick from, but in the church, I think there's only like five official scapulars with indulgences attached and the St. Joseph scapular is one of them. Uh, a few years ago, I was contemplating entering religious life. And so I was having a, a webcam interview with a Capuchin friar in Toronto. This was before Zoom and everything, but uh, so I asked him about it. I said, oh, do you wear the, the St. Joseph scapular? And, and he didn't know what I was talking about. And I thought, well, you guys invented it, you know, the Capuchins. So uh, I, that's why I'm so grateful for this year of St. Joseph is we can educate, you know, everybody, even those who, sure. who started promoting Joseph and then it falls to the wayside and then you forget about it. So we need to bring all these traditions back so we can move them forward with us. But yeah, um, the thing with scapulars though, I find the images rub off way too quickly. Like I'm in between scapulars now. So if anyone wants to send me a St. Joseph scapular, I could sure use one. Um, but I encourage people to wear it and be invested in it. Yeah, there's this website, scapulars.com. Of course, they promote the brown scapular. It would seem like during this year of St. Joseph for them, it would be, you know, it, it would behoove them in a sense to promote it, to do it, to, uh, I bet that it, there could be some traction behind that. So yeah, I was grateful to have seen it. I never had heard of it myself either. So uh, I'm appreciative that you uh, instructed me that you kind of helped me to learn about that. So um, we talk about the year of St. Joseph. It's a year, it's a renaissance, as you mentioned. What's your hope as we go forward from the year of St. Joseph as it continues, but then as it comes to a close, what's your hope for after the year of St. Joseph? Uh, well, my hope is that the year of St. Joseph will never end. <laughs> that uh, it's something that people suddenly, I don't want people to suddenly drop St. Joseph once the year is over. Kind of like what I did with St. Paul after the year of St. Paul. You know, for me, the Blessed Virgin Mary, she's an integral part of our spirituality as Catholics. I think St. Joseph should be right next to her in that it's perpetual. It keeps moving with us. We don't just regulate it to the past, you know, uh, where you read about it as, oh, well, a footnote, you know, oh, there was a year of St. Joseph from 2020 to 2021. No, like carry this forward. So it's my hope that people will not treat him as a fad and continue to grow in uh, their relationship with them because we need them. 
That's great. Well, wonderful. And if people want to learn more about St. Joseph, beside Father Calloway's consecration of St. Joseph and a lot of the other works out there, the book of Joseph uh, can be a, a great help. You've brought together a lot of different teachings and traditions and and whatnot about St. Joseph. So if you want to meet him, this is one way that you can do that. The book's available on Amazon. That's where I picked up my copy. It's available other places, I'm sure, as well. It's translated in lots of different languages too, isn't it? Yes, uh, there's a Spanish version, which I have here, El Libro de San Jose. Uh, there is recently a Portuguese version that was released. And I'm just putting the final touches on a Filipino language version. Nice. So we're just waiting for the editing on that. Well, wonderful. Well, in the name of St. Joseph, I thank you for your great work, for your devotion, for your witness, uh, because I saw how much you love St. Joseph. And I said, this is a guy I want to talk to. So thanks for taking time out of your day today to join me on A Cup of St. Joe. All right. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you for the opportunity. And you've been listening to A Cup of St. Joe. We just served you an espresso shot of teaching about St. Joseph. And next, you can join me in devotion as we pray the litany of St. Joseph. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next week. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous Defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph, most just, pray for us. Joseph, most chaste, pray for us. Joseph, most prudent, pray for us. Joseph, most courageous, pray for us. Joseph, most obedient, pray for us. Joseph, most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and Prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, Grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we now venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.